I started to learn to TIG weld with no clue what I was doing. And you can imagine what my welding looks like. But look at it now. Yep, I figured it out after learning some tricks. The first one is this trick here, and this trick's gonna be done with the filler rod. This is one of the most common things that people struggle with. I don't know how to feed my filler material properly. Here's what you're gonna do, check this out. You're gonna take your torch hand and you're gonna do a couple dry runs with it, back and forth. You're gonna get comfortable and have a good range of movement. I'm also gonna give you a couple tricks with that in a few minutes here, hang tight for that. Now, when your travel hand is all comfy and you're all set with that, try this with your filler rod. Position your feet hand approximately six inches from the end of the welding joint. Start feeding the filler material out from your hand and make sure that you keep your filler hand stationary in this position. Do not creep it towards the welding area like this. Make sure it stays stationary like this here. You're gonna feed it all the way out until you've reached the welding area. And then at this point, you're gonna start advancing your torch hand, which is gonna start to travel. And this is gonna force your feeding hand to start backing up. Again, make sure you do not move your feeding hand. You wanna remain completely stationary as you feed all the way back in while being chased with the torch. And then as you reach the end of the pass, reverse your travel direction back to the start. And this way you start to chase the torch by feeding the filler material out. Do this over and over, repeat it as many times as you can. Theoretically with your torch hand, people are much more consistent and comfortable with this hand. You should be able to do this back and forth really smoothly. And this is gonna train your filler material hand to start following along. And again, make sure you don't advance your feeding hand at all. Have it relaxed in a position position like this and feed with whatever grip feels most comfortable for you. This way in the future, no matter what project or what weld you're doing, uh, welding around something tricky, your filler material hand is gonna be trained to stay out of your way and stay ready to feed. Sometimes in some circumstances, you can see here, I'm actually feeding around the corner with a bent filler rod. No matter what the situation is, we wanna have the goal that in the real world, you can feed your filler material confidently and comfortably. But what about when you're practicing something new and more challenging? A lot of people learn a couple basics on flat plate or something like that, but when they go on to working on more challenging stuff, it becomes much more difficult and they start making mistakes all over again. The next trick that I would always teach people is to always have a practice or a warm-up exercise to get warmed up with. And I would always recommend for somebody to do one of these warm-up exercises when they are moving on to something a little bit more challenging. For example, if somebody is working on a pass where they are about to introduce filler material for the first time, like we just talked about with some beginners when they start doing this, this can be really challenging. I teach this in my free class, which by the way, the link is in the description below. You can go check it out. In order to get good at comfortably introducing filler material to your work, you always wanna make sure that you can confidently warm up with an exercise that I call the dry arc. I've shown that lesson several times on my channel here, but I fully teach that in the free class on my website. This is also an exercise that I teach extensively in my full programs on my website. We actually go through a thorough and strategic approach to a lot of really fundamental mental exercises. We actually do a few really awesome lessons with uh, just the torch hand before we even introduce the filler material. That way when somebody goes to introduce the filler material at that point, they have a great understanding of the fundamentals that we have learned so far, and they can understand how to feed and introduce filler material much more quickly. If anybody encounters any problems when transitioning to the uh, stage where they're introducing filler material, dropping back to the dry arc exercise is gonna give them a really good check-in and another warm up with practicing something like the dry arc exercise. It's also going to help to ensure that all your gear is working good and smoothly. With every new challenge that you are trying to learn, no matter where you are with your progression, you should always have some kind of a warm-up exercise or some form of a practice that you can do to get warmed up before you start the new stuff. For example, if somebody is about to learn and try some outside corner joints, I would always recommend that somebody warm up and get tuned back in with an exercise like something called the stringer beads. Again, it's another exercise I teach in that free class, go watch it. There are a lot of similarities between these two positions, believe it or not. So if somebody is about to go ahead and introduce something like the outside corner joint to their skill set, I always recommend to warm up with something that's gonna give you some good practice and give you a good heads up so you stand a better chance at getting better results much more quickly. Same with pipe. So many people get set up with practical projects that they start working on with pipe joints. And this is actually something that I had to learn the hard way back in the day too. Instead of just fitting up the joint that you're gonna work on and then totally sending it, I would get a piece of scrap material that's like the exact same size and thickness of the material that you are going to work on and then just practice running lines around it. 
I'm gonna introduce a tool that's gonna help you out with this a lot. Just in a few minutes here, hang tight for that. Why try and learn everything all at once over an intricate joint like this butt joint on pipe here? When you can essentially get warmed up and all dialed in with all of your settings and positioning with a piece of scrap material. Once things are looking nice and tidy with that exercise, then jumping on to the actual butt joint configuration, you are now gonna have a much better chance of getting the results that you want to see way faster. In my actual full program, like I talked about, we go through a warm up exercise for every single lesson that we do. Going over this stuff, like I said, is gonna be a great way to check back in with your fundamentals, get dialed in and warmed up. Also make sure that your machine is running good for all of the challenges that lay ahead for you. For example, with every joint that you are about to do, are you positioned properly? This is another thing that I hear a lot of people complain about is they're uncomfortable or they can't see clearly. Sometimes they get lost and lose track of their details as they're welding, do this instead. Always make sure that whatever exercise that you are doing, you position your head near the end of the welding pass. Don't position it somewhere in the middle where you can essentially see clearly at the start. This is all gonna change once you start traveling. You wanna make sure that you position yourselves and you can remain in that position so you have good visibility all the way from the start to the finish. Always position your head somewhere around the end of the pass or where you are going to finish welding. You can also do this. You can take your workpiece and you can tilt it towards you slightly. I just talked about about this in an episode like a couple weeks ago. Positioning the piece so that it is tilted on a bit of an angle towards yourself. This way, instead of looking at things on a 90 degree angle to your work piece, we tilt things towards ourselves and we are looking down the length of the welding pass a little bit more. It gives you much better visibility and an in combination with your head being positioned at the end of the pass or in the proper area, you're gonna be able to see much more clearly and maintain good comfort. This is really a great way that you can super get organized with everything challenging that you're about to try out for the first time and in combination with the things that we just talked about a couple minutes ago, we're gonna make things even more simple here. Let's talk about a couple things that we can do with our machine setup that are gonna help you out a ton. There's gonna be three settings that I want you to pay attention to. Balance, amperage, and post flow. Now I know what you're thinking, on every TIG machine that you can buy these days, there's a million different customizable settings that you can set up. But like I mentioned, with everything else we're doing so far, we are keeping everything simple. I'm gonna clarify everything in a couple seconds here, hang on. And I'm gonna show you the settings that I'm gonna use with the 201 Pulse D by Canaweld here. Again, this machine is perfect for beginners and people looking to do some serious welding also. And these machines are available with a rebate now through Canaweld. So if you are looking to pick up a machine, do not miss out. Now is the time, do it. First, let's go over amperage here. Making it completely simple is this little fella right here. Using a foot pedal is gonna make things so much easier to set up. Essentially, you can just set your amperage for more than you think you will need. I set it for even 20 or 30 amps more than I think I'll actually need. And then as you are welding, you can always regulate this with the foot pedal on the fly. Easy as pie. Ryman, sweet. Run a test pass, whatever warm up exercise or practice exercise like we just talked about that you're about to do. Take a look at the results. If the edges of the welding are not blending in completely as they should be, increase your amperage by increments of 10 amps at a time and keep doing test passes until we see these problems improve. If you wanna get crazy and fine tune things even further from there, then adjust with increments of five amps and make sure you let your plate cool each time you do this. This way you start to creep closer and closer to the perfect amperage setting much easier. But again, like I said, even with our amperage being set 20 to 30 amps too high, we regulate it with the foot pedal, it's all good. This is how you keep things simple as heck. Next up, balance. This is important whether you are using a uh, inverter type machine or even a transformer type machine. Typically I set my balance for about 70 to 75% negative or about 25 to 30% positive for cleaning. Negative side is gonna give you the penetrating effect that actually allows you to do welding on your base material. And the positive side provides the cleaning action which removes the oxide and keeps your tungsten clean. If you run a pass and the tip of your tungsten starts to become misshapen or deformed like you see it fluttering and wobbling around here, you are running too much positive side of your balance. If you finish your weld and you start to see the pass looking dull or gray or sandy, this indicates that you are running an inadequate positive side of your balance. But again, doing your test passes, you're gonna be able to see these results and then make these adjustments before getting going with your actual projects or something more challenging. But just keep things simple. Just make sure that you see the tungsten staying the same shape it did when you started the weld and take a look at the finish of your weld as well as the cleaning 
action. Everything should look consistent from the start all the way to the finish. And then next up, post flow. We obviously wanna prevent any contamination or chances of contamination to the welding area as we are welding, but we also wanna make sure that we shield and protect the tungsten itself. Set your post flow so it stops cycling approximately or at least two seconds after your tungsten finishes glowing red hot. Watch this example here. You can see the gas shut off at least two seconds after this tungsten finished glowing red hot. When you finish this post flow cycle, the tungsten should be nice and clean and shiny. And combined with a good balance setting, you should be good to go with these. Volume of gas that I use is typically between 15 to 17 CFH, give or take. Typically I use a number five or a number six size cup, an eight at the absolute biggest, no bigger. Frequency, honestly, whatever. I just set mine to like 100 to 150 hertz and honestly listen if you are just learning this is going to make no difference at all definitely don't worry about any pulse settings or anything fancy like that yet just find a good square wave setting for your ac cycle on your machine and then start running your warm-up exercises what is this tool here this is one of the most important tools that my students learn to use believe it or not this is a tungsten scribe. You can use this to draw guidelines on your metal. This is really easy, obviously, with aluminum because aluminum's so soft. If you don't have one of these things, you could just use an old piece of tungsten that you don't really care about anymore. Like we talked about earlier, warming up with dry arcs or something like that, even stringer beads. Again, I show you how to do all this stuff in the free class. You're gonna scribe out lines that you are going to use as reference lines or guides as you are welding. You'll check in with these all the time, trust me. Working with a lap joint, that's another really awkward one where this helps you out a ton. That's an awkward joint. You have gravity pulling on one side way more than the other. I teach my students in my programs. We are gonna start out with scribing a line on the bottom plate. This does not have to be exactly where the edge of the welding area is going to be. It is literally just a reference that we're gonna check in with as we are welding. With this joint, it's really easy to get lost and lose the bottom line. This helps you to stay on track. I also teach my students in my programs to do this with fillet joints. Again, with this one, we're gonna have gravity fighting you on one side way more than the other. Taking a bit of time to properly brush your welding area and then scribing out a guideline is going to help you immensely. You can even do this around curved or round shapes. Check out this pipe fillet here. You can see I am literally just scribing a rough bottom line around the bottom of this pipe. All this is gonna do is just give me something that I'm gonna be able to check in with and see clearly as I am welding. This helps me out so much to maintain a bottom line and we can see that these joints look really good when you keep that consistency the whole way around. My friends, these are the free classes on my website. I'm not going to say it again. Okay, maybe I will. These are complete workshops specific to TIG welding. I've got one for aluminum. I've got one for stainless steel. They are completely free. You just register with your email. Watch them as many times as you want. I put a ton of work into them. Go watch them and enjoy them. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. I am Dusty James, Bill and Chill. We will talk soon. Peace.